And and when a man is in the same position, even if it's the same words coming out of his mouth, sometimes it's just perceived as being direct and strong as opposed to being direct and a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a there's an expectation for us to be soft and fuzzy and warm and loving and maternal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sometimes maternal if my child is in the room. Hey, Warners, welcome to another episode of The Women Your Mother Warned You About. Podcast that makes business sexy again. I'm Gina Tremarco, master trainer and coach at Sales Gravy, using my sexy voice. Mm, I'm Rachel Pitts, mortgage loan officer at U.S. Mortgage Corporation and creator of your ultra fit lifestyle. Oh, my God. We're too much. <laughs> kind of got into it there for a second. I know. Hey, <sighs> it might sell. It might sell some ads. I don't know. Um, welcome once again to this episode. Excited to have Kara Kirsch on this show. She um came to us through following Jeb and then she and I had a conversation and I thought she was super cool. And I said, Hey, come be on our podcast. So I think she's a super interesting. Um, she comes out of the insurance world, another kind of male dominated world where she has had to step up to help other women be successful. She has a really cool conference called ignite women in insurance kind of had to take a little bit of a, a little hiatus during the pandemic, but it'll be coming back in 2022. And we talked about that on this episode. So um, just kind of some cool stuff to talk about thinking about us as women. What did you think, Rachel? I think she had a lot of interesting things to say about how women can rise to the occasion in sales and and also she had some really good insight into her definition of of sexy it really throws me off yes oh my gosh that definition of sexy did you see me i almost fell off my stool you did and i was like Ugh. what <laughs> oh my god that was the Clearly, most interesting not yeah. not i was not mm. ready i was not ready mm, 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 mm. well i my favorite phrase was there's room for all of us which is such a truth bomb, such a great reminder. We touch on unconscious bias, imposter syndrome, leadership, um, you know, women in the C-suite. So lots of stuff in this episode with Kara Kirsch. And once again, thank you, Sales Gravy and Jeb Blunt for being the sponsor of this show. Let's now listen to this episode. This is another episode of The Women Your Mother Warned You About, and today our guest is Kara Kirsch. Is that, did I say that right, Kara? You got it. Awesome. Welcome to our show. Thanks for having me. How excited are you to be here? I, you, you said you, you have listened to some of our episodes. I'm curious if you have one in particular that jumps out at you. Um, yes, I have listened to your episodes and there was one where you had a gentleman, I don't recall his name right now, but I think he was in banking and something about being warned about women. You guys asked a question about, did your mother ever warn you about women and what were the warnings? And he was like, I'd rather not talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> nice sidestep. Was was that Rick Guerrero? I can't think of who was in banking. I mean, he would be the the latest one. It would have. I wonder if it was. I wonder if it was Rick. Could have been. Yeah. And it wasn't very long ago. I probably listened to it. Well, I listened to it the night that you and I talked, Gina. Oh, okay. So on my way to where I was going, I listened to it before you and I got on our call. Oh, okay, fantastic. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, Rick has been texting me all morning. And I, I am. Not, I'm like, hey, I'll get back to you at six thirty. Yeah, really, too busy. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry. 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 So yeah, so we had talked we had talked some time ago. Um and maybe I want to say a month and a half ago. And I think this came off of this came off of you may have heard you may have heard our podcast with with Jeb Blunt being on his show. Somehow you ended up in uh, on a text message or an email with Jeb, I think that then just came that came my way. Does that sound yep. right? That's all right. 
Yeah, Jeb is um, one of my idols in sales. Last year, um, he was my coach all year, even though he didn't know it. So just really was excited about all of his content and started to try it and just killed it last year, which was awesome. And then this year joined a new firm and brought a lot of the strategy that Jeb taught me. Um, and that's been awesome also. But on that podcast, you were on with him and he said a couple of things. He said, one, why don't you guys create a, you know, female, I call it think tank. I know you call it something a little bit different, Gina, but I was like, yes. And secondly, he said he had this new way that he would communicate with people, which was text. And I was like, yeah, right. I'm going to text this blind thing and get this ridiculousness in response. And so I thought, well, what the hell? I have nothing to lose. So I text him and said I was really interested in this female group. And then um, you and I got on an email trail together. And then I had the the um, opportunity to talk to you. And when I first got his email, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm getting an email from a celebrity, my my idol. And um, then when I got to talk to you, I thought, oh, my gosh, where have you been all my life? Because you're my people, too. And so um, I'm so excited to be on today because, first of all, I admire both of you for, um, you know, talking about women your what your mother warned you about. I never would have thought to even search that topic in podcasting. So I'm excited to hear more of those episodes. But secondly, is just that in my industry, we lack females in sales. We have lots of female account managers, but someone challenged me recently and said, Kara, it's not okay for you to say you're the only one anymore. Who are, what are you going to do about it? And so the more visibility that we can create in our industry across the globe, the more likely I am to recruit and get young women who are in a different season of parenting than I'm in to join this workforce and to be as excited about this industry as I am. Ooh. And I love that um, your your message definitely was very funny. You're like, I feel like I'm talking to two celebrities. I'm like, who's the other one? Who are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, right. Hashtag I know Gina. <laughs> uh, Jeb Jeb's definitely been um, an idol of mine. We all we all know that semi idol of Rachel's, but I was the one, I'm usually the, I was the one drooling over him in the beginning to try to get him on the show and and develop that relationship with him. Oh my gosh. So Kara, if you have read, study his material, and I'm going to ask you about that in a second, you'll appreciate this good story. Quick, d quick Jeb story. <laughs> so I've been trying to get Jeb on the phone and I've been approaching it. I've been approaching it like he's got a really busy, busy schedule. So I'm kind of been using his own tactics on him to try to get him on the phone to discuss an upcoming project. And so I've called him a couple of times and used my framework and done all the proper things. And the other day I was in the middle of a prospecting call block and I was like, I'm just going to try Jeb right now. I had my like framework written out in front of me and I get and I get him on the phone. He answers the phone. And I just like fr froze up in the way that you freeze up when you usually get some kind of strong objection. I froze up and I went, Jeb, how are you? Like, and then I went, oh, duh, duh, duh. Like you never All say, hi, how are you to somebody like, Jeb, it's Rachel Pitts. The reason for my call is blah, blah, blah. But I just like <laughs> blew it so bad. It was just... Luckily, he was very busy and we got the phone call taken care of really quickly and, you know, figured out what was next. But I was like, I just blew it so bad because I felt like I was talking to a rock star, too. It's like calling the president of the United States and they answer and you're like, right. Wait, you answered. You answered. I mean, we're, the good news is we're all human. So, you know, we we try to teach these things and then we try to practice what we preach and be all the things and and we've we like to show the world that we are not perfect. Um, yes. And I think this is a big issue for women. And I think that's kind of where Karen and I got into a conversation about. She wanted to know more about this mastermind group, which uh, we are forming uh, and putting together. It's like one piece after another piece. Um, we have a big conference with Outbound to prepare for, and. Um, I'm very excited that Sales Gravy is launching. I don't want to say launching because it exists, but we're like overtly launching 
um, our coaching division and having more to offer with that. So we're super excited about that. That's in the, in the process right now. And people start seeing more information about coaching and, and hiring a coach and how to hire a coach. And, uh, I have a number of clients right now that I work with and, um, I just started their mastermind group and Rachel has been part of mastermind groups with me as, as my client, um, in the past. And, um, you know, we particularly love working with women and helping women. And it's not just your industry, Kara, it's just about every industry that we see a, maybe not enough women doing it. That can be an interesting conversation in itself, but just to kind of get a little background of like how Kara ended up here today. We just ended up in this conversation about forming, it's not like it's new either, but I feel like right now coming out of a pandemic, this is like not coming out of it, but how do we now just come back to doing things like that and helping women strengthen themselves and be better? I know that's a long, long lead up to how Kara got here today. Well, I want to rewind as well back to Kara's comment about the title of our show. So Kara, do you consider yourself a woman your mother warned you about? Probably. Um, my mother never warned me about any women. So um, just to give you guys a little bit of context, I am the oldest child. I have two brothers, no sisters. My mom doesn't have any sisters. My dad doesn't have any sisters. And so I grew up with boys. And it, there was no, you know, my dad never said, oh, Kara, you can't do that. Or girls don't. I mean, there was just not any kind of conversation like that. And so now my dad says to me, are you playing nice in the sandbox? You know, he's trying to be funny, but to answer your question, I would say that that they would say that I'm a woman that my mother would warn you about. And only because, you know, you're not going to walk all over me. I'm going to stand my ground. I'm going to be prepared. I'm going to bring my A game every time. Um, and that can be one of the things that's intimidating to people. Uh-huh. So I think she is one. Would you say you didn't play nice in the sandbox when you were younger? Or did you just hold your own with the boys? Well, as long as people did what I said, then, <laughs> yeah, I was playing nice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm kidding, but you know what I mean? Like, someone has to yes. be the leader, and that was me when I was a little kid. Yeah, yes. that's, that is really pretty interesting, because I, I flash back to being a kid, and you definitely see it in, in children at an early age. You see their personalities of who's the introvert, who's the extrovert, who's going to lead, who's the bully. Uh, funny, we just interviewed Anthony in Reno, uh, and we, we talked about his bully tendencies uh, as a kid, and we also talked about sand. So it's interesting, we're talking about the sandbox and playing nice in the sandbox. I think many of us, at some point, we try our best to play nice in the sandbox, and then someone has to stand up and be the leader. Yeah. Or someone has to say the way that we're doing it isn't working. So can we try it a different way? Um, I was just listening to this book called um, Power Moves by Adam Grant. You guys know who that is? He's fantastic. He talks a lot about being curious in your life, curious in business, curious in your life. And there were some statistics that none of us are um, don't know. None of us, you know, we do know what I'm about to tell you. But basically, it's about, you know, how girls are raised compared to boys in terms of, um, you know, the things that they're allowed to do, the things they're exposed to um, and how their, how their dad responds to them on the emotional side and those kinds of things. And he talks a lot about that. And then fast forward to today, you know, you see organizations with one woman in the suite, in the C-suite, if they have two, they're like, we care about women, <laughs> you know? Um, and so it's just very interesting times. And um I think it's only going to get better from here, but we've been through some shit. How do we make it yeah. better, Carol? Um, when things happen, we have to address them with, and I say this a little tongue in cheek, um, without being guns a blazing. Here's what I mean. When something happens, which is um, gender biased, for example, what the approach that I've taken in business specifically is when it happens, I'll wait a couple of days and then I'll meet with the person that it happened with and I'll say, hey, 
we were at this meeting together and this is what happened. Do you remember that? Yes. Would you have done that to a male colleague? Probably not. And then they'll say, well, why do you think I did that? And I'll say, that's gender bias, unconscious bias. So because I was a woman sitting next to you, you felt like that was okay to do unconsciously. So now that you know better, you have to do better. And not just for male peers and male um, colleagues, but female colleagues too, where if I ask for work to get done, female colleagues might push back and say, well, she's asking for too much. And I'd have to say to them, if one of my male colleagues asked you to do the same work, what would you do? And 100% of the time they say, I would have done what they said. And so making sure that you bring out unconscious bias specifically when it happens, but in a way so that the person can receive the message and doesn't feel threatened and isn't defensive. Hey, Gina, what? You know what we need right now? What? What do we need? We need to hear from our sponsor, Jeb Blunt at Sales Gravy. Let's hear what he has to say. Hi, this is Jeb Blunt. There's a reason why thousands of sales professionals and top companies across the globe hone their sales skills at SalesGrave University. You see, SalesGrave University is different than most learning platforms. First, we have live courses taught in a virtual classroom by our master trainers that start almost every single day. And our e-learning platform is populated with hundreds of hours of sales training content produced by some of the top sales trainers in the world, including Gina's spontaneous selling course, which is worth checking out. Now I've got some good news. If you've never taken a course on Sales Gravy University, if you're a new user, you can take your very first course for free. That's any course on the platform, absolutely free. Just go to learn.salesgravy.com. That's learn.salesgravy.com or click the e-learning tab in the top menu at salesgravy.com. Pick out your course. And when you check out, use coupon code free course to get that course for free. That is free course to get your very first course for free. Yeah, I definitely would agree 100% that the, the approach, the delivery and the timing of it is important because as you said, Kara, if you're sitting in a meeting and somebody makes a comment or takes an action that is revealing their gender bias, calling them out in front of everybody else and saying, hey, don't talk to me like that just because I'm a woman, like that's not going to make, that's just going to create conflict, which co- more conflict is not what's needed, but to be able to see it. So good yeah. for you for showing that kind of restraint. And do you see do you see this a lot in in your industry? Um, yeah. I mean, we in our industry, lots of deals get done on the golf course. Lots of deals get done at dinners where there are no women. Lots of deals get done on male trips, golf trips to Vegas, or you know, other kinds of trips that might not interest me because I don't golf, or might not interest me because I don't want to go to Vegas. Um, and so, yeah, for sure, it happens, and and. So I'm trying to educate the men about what unconscious bias is. And then secondly, help women to understand that just because I'm successful and accomplished doesn't mean that that I'm not approachable and compassionate about the people that work with me. Because that's another stigma, right? The more successful she is, the bigger the bitch she is. Well, no, not necessarily. But it's this platform that we put women on when they are more successful, when they make more money. You know, men, we do this sort of attaboy thing and women were like, oh, she's unapproachable now or she had had to do certain things to get to that. That's exactly what I was going to say. It's it's approachable. People have have a tendency to think that on occasion people have thought I'm not approachable. I've heard that. Me too. Me three. And, you know, and, and going back to your your comment earlier, Kara, about if a man did it would it be perceived in that way? And that's definitely what I believe happens with women who come into power positions or perceived as very successful that it's not necessarily that they're a bitch. It's just that they're direct because uber successful women have a lot going on and they don't have time to be all wishy-washy and nice about everything. They're just being direct. And and when a man is in the same position, even if it's the same words coming out of his mouth, sometimes it's just perceived as being direct and strong as opposed to being direct and a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's an expectation for us to be soft and fuzzy and warm and loving and maternal. 
<laughs> I'm sometimes maternal if my child is in the room. Right. Other than that. That's right. Uh, yeah, other than that, even you and I are just, but we know each other well enough at this point of like, got to go. All right, busy. See, you. okay, love you. Bye. Like it's, it's, we're, we're direct. We're to the point. Some people can read. It was, it was hysterical this morning. The two of us squirrel chasers together in person at 7 a.m. having a meeting in my house. And somehow we still managed to accomplish what we needed to accomplish by the time that we were supposed to accomplish. I was pretty impressed with us because we kept going on tangents. I would, and I would say, okay, we're going to come back to, to our actual reason for this meeting. And I'm going to not go into that story. Most of the, most of them. And we did it. We could wrangle each other. We don't mind. We, we have no problem wrangling each other. That's true love right yeah, there. If you, eh. It is. It is. If you, and if you're in a position of power, um, or you're managing a, a handful of employees or a whole lot of employees as a woman in leadership, you, you've got to be direct so that the, you know, the, the employees are looking to you for guidance and leadership. And so if it's all wish too much wishy-washy and soft and vague and hinting at, I'd kind of like you to get this proposal done for me. Would that be Wait. okay? Like, no, oh, here's the proposal. I need it done by this date. And here are some details. Yeah. Yeah. I still, I still feel like I fall into this. Just how I think I shared this with you, Rachel. I, I did this recently with someone that did something. I'll just leave it at that. And I, and it was another woman. And I'm like, I was passive. I don't say passive aggressive. I just was passive about it in asking her why she did it. And then I'm like, I should just be so direct because then the answer I got from her, I'm like, no, that's not, that's not a good answer. And I'm like, well, I didn't ask her a direct question. So yeah. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to ask a direct question and make a direct statement. It wasn't just about a question. It was like, PS, this is how it's done mm -hmm. in case you didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you didn't get the memo on it. Yeah. Boom. And I, I really looked at how like the, my first pass at it was like, well, I don't want to upset her or, or I don't want her to be mad at me. And so I'm just going to kind of beat around the bush and so get her to guess. Right. I'm like, um, why do I do that? Why did I do that? Well, because you're fine with confrontation, but the other person may not be. And so you're trying to avoid them being defensive with you. And, you know, their defensive mechanism Boom. isn't your issue. Like your issue is to solve the challenge that's ahead of you, whatever that is. And how they receive it is on them. And I always say, if, yeah. as long as we're respectful and professional of one another, no one can ever say that I've demeaned them or been disrespectful or unprofessional. There's none of that. Just because you think I'm scary because I don't talk about my personal life with you, that doesn't, that's not my issue. One other thing I was going to tell you guys is that a couple of years ago, actually four years ago, one of the things that I felt strongly about and still do is just creating a space for women in my industry in Nebraska to get together and share content and, um, you know, sisterhood and that kind of thing. So I formed a nonprofit called Ignite Women in Insurance. And it was basically the concept of igniting us. So, you know, how can we make ourselves um, supportive of one another, because the other thing that happens is women don't promote and sponsor each other. And so how could I teach women in my industry that that was okay to do? And so the mantra of the organization is there's room for all of us because there's competitors of mine that are in the group and I'm a competitor to people. And so how can we be respectful of one another and still promote each other? So for example, when I've lost a deal to someone else and it was a woman and the prospect called me and said, hey, Kara, we picked this person. What do you think? My response isn't like, oh, well, I, I don't say anything negative. I just say she's smart. If I have nothing else that's positive to say, she's smart. You have to be smart to be in this business and be successful and close deals, period. And so if she did that, all I got to say is she's smart. And that's been awesome. We have an annual conference that brings all of our women together. And we've had about 200 women together. So it's definitely a dream of mine that has come true with the support of a ton of people. I mean, I would be um, remiss if I didn't include all of my team and all the people that work hard to pull it off. But you have to take action. If you want it to change, you have to take action. Tell us more about that conference, because I was actually just about to ask you about it when you segued there. It's like you read my mind. We're on that level already. Beautiful. 
Um, the conference is a half day conference and we have a theme every year and um, we have the guest speakers and we have usually a round table activity that our group can do together. So like the first year we did a speed networking thing that I do sometimes when I do talks about building your network and your brand. Um, and it just helps people to get familiar with one another. Who are they? What are they about? Um, that kind of thing. But then it brought relevant content. So the first year we focused on um, unconscious bias. So talking about what it is, because a lot of women feel it, but they can't put their finger on exactly what's going on. Imposter syndrome. So why is it that I feel like I don't fit here? What can I do to change the narrative in my mind? Um, just overall leadership. How do I grow into leadership if that's what I want in my career? Um, we've just had some really great content. Last year, we had to postpone, and we've actually just postponed it now until 2022 because because our conference is best attended in person. And this year, I'm just like, it's a wash. But um, our content and theme was really all around sponsorship and learning how to do that. So we had a male guest speaker who was going to talk about how he sponsors women. So really saying like if someone said in my industry to someone, hey, we're unhappy with our rising healthcare costs, I want people to say, talk to Kara Kerr, she's the best at that. And so how do we learn how to sponsor and do that for women? Because women don't do that enough. Men do that like as layup, you know, oh, Joe does that, or I think he did. Um, I think he might be a CPA. So yeah, talk to him. Oh, Kara, no, I don't think she went to Harvard to get that. So I don't think she's qualified to handle it. Um, and being funny, but yeah. So um, this next year will be focused around that. It's so exciting. And the feedback we've gotten has been tremendous. Sounds like you need to expand it for a full day. Yeah. Well, my dream is for it to be a weekend conference. There you go. A good first step would be a full day. Yep. I'd be shooting for a full day next year. Yep. You got time. Yep. So I, I was thinking about when you said a lot of deals in your industry are done on the golf course and places where women are not invited. It made me think back to another industry that I did a bunch of interviews in the past with um, top performing women who are, there's just not a lot of them in that particular industry. And they were saying that a lot of the deals like at, at these type of conferences, when this industry of people comes together, there's a, there's always like the big party at the strip club that the guys go and do deals, right? Obviously the women are not always invited to this. So in those type of scenarios where it's like the good old boy system happening, what would you say is a great way for women to flip that script and, it, and say, well, it doesn't matter, I'm not invited to those types of events because this is how I'm gonna do it. Yeah, well, create your own. So in my industry, there's tons of women that are in decision-making roles to hire me. And they don't wanna go on those trips either, by the way. So what I do is I look for events where they will want to participate. So in Nebraska specifically, we have a big conference called ICANN. And all, you know, it's very, it's a big deal. Thousands of women are there. And so what I do is the night before I invite my guests to dinner at this really great steak place downtown. And it's a very intimate situation and it's where we can all get to know each other. So because of the day of the conference, it's running all around to the session. So you really don't get to build a relationship with anyone and people love the dinner. So now they're asking like, are we still doing the dinner? Because the dinner is what brought us together. So you have to create new ways to interact with people where they are. It's like I always say, if you're working on a prospect that is in a different season of their life or motherhood than you are, you have to find a way to meet them where they are. So if you've got little kids, do you think I'm going to ask you to have breakfast with me? Probably not. You're taking kids to school. You're doing all that. You're going to be more apt to have a coffee mid-morning or a lunch, probably not a dinner. Um, and so the more that we can meet people where they are, the better we are able to form a relationship with them and the more they are likely to buy from us. And it's not that that's my primary goal, right? But it is a, a, a unintentional consequence of that action. Mm -hmm. And it's a good it's a good uh, rule of thumb in sales in general that a lot of what makes salespeople come across as sleazy or come across as disingenuous is that the sale is all about the salesperson rather than, as you said, Kara, meet somebody where they are and make it about them. And the process goes a lot smoother because the prospect 
knows that you care. Totally. Part of our human need to feel important, right? It's such an, it's, we have this insatiable appetite to feel important. And when you, when you take that approach, it, people just lean into you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. I'd love to have you guys at my conference. Will you come? When is it? <laughs> well, the, the 2022 date hasn't been set yet, but one of the things that I'd love to add into our content is sales. You know, could we have an hour segment on sales coaching? Because we do it, I say we, I mean women, we do it different. Our process isn't always the same, but the fundamentals are always there. So like what Jeb teaches, those fundamentals are critically important to the process mm-hmm. and to your success. Mm-hmm. And so I've always wanted to have a component of that there for the people that would enjoy that. Cause I think you can apply it to lots of parts of your life, right? Um, not just if you're in sales. So I'll send you the date and if there's a way for you guys to be involved, I would love that. Yeah. Awesome. And I love Nebraska. You do? do. What do you love about Nebraska? I do. I know it's crazy. I love Lincoln, Nebraska. I've got a lot of friends there and I, I just, there's, I love, I mean, I love, I love Omaha too, but I just love the vibe of Lincoln, Nebraska. I don't know. I'm just, yeah, it's a great I've been vibe. There I don't lot. even, I, I'd have to like, it'd take me a minute to spot Nebraska on the map, to be honest. You'd be, su- you'd be yeah. surprised. Center. Yeah. <laughs> you, the you know, center be, of the world. Yeah. You'd be surprised about what is in Nebraska. Yeah. And yeah. how rich we are with resource here. Mm-hmm. You know, when you think about mm-hmm. water and food and energy and tech. So like our startup groups are yeah, growing tremendously um, because, huh. you know, it's it's the percentage per capita is very small compared to like the Bay Area or Silicon Valley. But um, it's awesome. So, yeah, I, I love it here. I grew up in Nebraska in a small town, 765 people. Ooh. I, I was surprised just the fact that like Lincoln had several, not one, several co-work spaces. I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, we don't even have one in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina yet. We're in the works, but. Yeah, Nebraska's a good place. That's why they call it the good life. Hmm. Well, well, you might just, you might just see us there next year. Yeah. So. Now that you guys have talked to me for a few minutes, do you think I'm a woman my mother would warn me about? I think so. I think you qualify. I think I think you qualify. I do. What do you think, Rachel? I think she I think she's passed the the first set of tests. <laughs> we do have some more questions. Some some signature questions to ask you to seal the deal. Oh yeah, I guess I guess we're yeah. o- we're almost at time to wrap that wrap that up, wrap the show up. Um we don't want to put you on the spot, but we're hoping not everybody can get to this, but we're hoping maybe you'll get to outbound or maybe you'll check out outbound virtually. I am, I'm already registered. Yay. For virtual or in person? Well, virtual this year, because mm-hmm. the timing of it is during my annual family camping trip. Ooh. Ooh. And I'm just super committed to that trip. Sure. So, um, I have to go a little bit early because it takes me a while to settle myself down. Good, good for you. So it's right, right smack in the middle of that. So my dad actually renovated an Airstream and gifted it to me last year. <sighs> Shut up. What's the deal it's with the Airstream bomb. comeback? I've we were driving this weekend and there was Airstreams everywhere. It seems like the Airstream is making a comeback. The bomb. Oh my gosh, this like, is what I was talking about, Rachel. Yeah, like it's. Awesome. He did all wood floors. He did copper sinks and like this really funky tile that's like all over. One of the things I hate about campers is the bed. They're not a comfortable. He had a custom bed put in. I mean, Rachel, listen to this. Listen to this, Rachel. Dude, we had a conversation. Felix and I had a conversation this weekend because there's there's such a housing shortage around here right now. We could make a boat ton of money if we put my house, his house. Long story short, we have two houses on the market. It, and so we are like, ah, fuck it. Let's sell boats and just get an RV and like whatever for now. And I'm like, you know what? If we were able to make that kind of money and stash it away for whatever the next house is, I might be down like. RV, RV, RV. <laughs> well, I mean, I convinced, I convinced like, you to get a dog. Maybe I, I, there's still hope. There's still hope. 
for the RV. Yeah, you never know with people. Yeah. I've been wanting to do like a Rachel and Gina go across America in an RV. And she's like, no. It could happen. Well, I could be the stand-in, Rachel, Gina. Oh, oh. I mean, mm. I'm not as shredded. Yet. But, yet. Right. Show me those guns. Um, yeah, I'll, po- I'll, po- I'll pose. I'm like, this is real. This is the real Rachel. This is Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> people be like who don't is mind this? rachel who she's is this blonde <laughs> i know rachel said she was into nutrition <laughs> she's let, gotten off the wagon a bit but she'll be back on us <laughs> oh my gosh uh it has been fun having you on the show with us today i know we got a couple more questions before we wrap up and i'm gonna let rachel ask those questions Question number one, Kara, how would you define the word sexy? Mm. A bald-headed baseball player oh, in a baseball yes. uniform? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, that was not expected, and, and I yes. guess I like it. Why bald? Sexy is oh, there's nothing oh. sexier than a bald man. Sexy really? AF, yes. yes. Oh yes. yes. I don't think I've ever had Absolutely. a bald man. Let me think for a minute. Wait a second. We just well, interviewed you're An- missing out. We just interviewed Anthony and Arino. You don't find that I'm, sexy? I'm talking about full sexy, like over here, like rubbing the head, kind of sexy. Oh yeah, I- like kind of greasy, little little bit slick. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Rachel. We don't edit anything. You can edit that. We don't edit anything. No, you know, some I I'm very picky about greasy things and Mm. and furry faces. (sighs) The greasy head. I don't know. I you know Felix may go bald one day, so I'll have to let you know in a few years. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Um, I'll need to do a little research on that. Um, y'all threw me off there. Question. Second question, Kara, is <laughs> what's the best advice you've ever been given? Oh, I was given this advice two years ago, and this is what it is. Part of life is just showing up. And I have really tried to put that into my life in how I schedule myself and and not canceling, how I make time for the things that I value the most and cut things out that I don't love um, or that don't bring me joy. And, you know, when he said that to me, I thought, wow, you're right. Like you got to show up in life. You can't just phone it in. Yep. And even when you don't want to, you got to show up. So like even today, this is because I, this whole thing happened because I thought, oh, what the hell? I'll text Jeb. It's probably not real. Do you know how many people probably thought that and didn't text? Takes a chance. And and think that and still think it. It really is him. Yeah, right. That's right. It really is. I love his text. So oh. part of life is just showing up. You got to show up. You can't call it in. I like it. And last question. What is, is there any advice you wish you had been given? Uh, yeah, that... Work-life balance isn't a thing. Amen. So early, you know, everyone's talking about work-life balance. I'm a single mom. I have three young adult children, 23, 19, 17. I've been a single mom for 17 years. And I tried really hard to make it work when my kids were little and I was building my career and I did not do a good job. And my kids, will, their therapists will testify to this today. And it was because I was trying to make balance and not just leaning in and accepting that it was chaotic. And I don't know what I could have done differently except for not climb the career ladder, which was not an option. And my kids will realize that one day. But work-life balance is not a thing. That's what this show's about. Mm -mm. You know, a big part of why we brought this, kind of created the show was showing women and men that you just, you do the best that you can to make it all happen. And we all do it differently. Yeah. Yep. And everybody's got some chaos going on. That's right. That's exactly what I was about to say. The the uh, the highlights reels that we see on social media for people and including mine, people are like, how do you get it all done? You do so many things. Well, I never watch TV. I have some emotional breakdowns. I cry in the shower a lot and some things fall off the rails. 
So period end of this end of story. <laughs> and I have really good boundaries. Yeah. I, I protect certain times. So Friday nights, all my people know I do not make plans. There is no plan for Friday night because likely I'll fall apart and go to bed at eight o'clock. And then I have to cancel and make up this lame ass excuse about why I don't want to go. All about, all about the boundaries. Right. That's a good plan. Mm. I like that. The nothing, nothing allowed time slot. I like that. Well, hey, it's been awesome having you on the show. We look forward to you participating in Outbound virtually. Somehow I'm sure yeah. we'll be able to say hi to you. And if people want to reach out to you, get to know more about you, uh, especially in your area, how do they do that? Um, well, I'm on all social. So you can find me on all of the social areas, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, um, and it's just my name, Kara Kirsch. If you search by that, you'll be able to find it. If you want to find me to solve your healthcare challenges, you can look me up on Gallagher's website or on LinkedIn, contact me there. Um, and my cell phone's out there and all of that. So you can text me or call me or find me on social. I'm so grateful that I've been able to be on today, Gina. And I really do want to be part of the mastermind. I think that I could bring a lot to the table and I could learn a lot from you guys too. So I hope that that's still a consideration. Thank you. We are, we are in the midst of, of creating it. Um, so stay tuned. Sounds stay good. Tuned. So thanks again for being on the show today. We really appreciate it. And a thank you to our listeners, to our warners, to listening to this episode of The Women Your Mother Warned You About, brought to you, powered by, sponsored by Sales Gravy. And if you want more information about Sales Gravy and any of our courses, please go to salesgravy.com or salesgravy.university. And once again, check out Outbound. You can do it virtually and you can use our special promo code warners 100 to get a hundred dollars off either um actually you can't come live anymore because we are sold out but you can come virtually and so thank you so much again for listening i'm gina tremarco and rachel any final words for you anything else you need to know you can find at women your mother warned you about dot com bye This really will get serious soon. Yeah, I don't, it, it doesn't have to. I don't think anybody wants it to be serious.